we are in a great war and it's magic against magic abracadabra 777 Jewish students protesters say anti-semitism is being weaponized against them Shalom all my sisters and my bro stars allies and friends of the star seed united I send you infinite love and light and I receive yours abracadabra addressing the spy out there that turned my comment section off four times on my last video if you haven't watched my last video they turned the comments off for a reason yep I'll deal with you in the courts of the Most High, but thank you. I really appreciate you letting me know and confirming that you know how powerful our word magic is. Abracadabra777. Yes, Star Siege 90. On the last video, I had to keep watch on my videos. They turned them off three times before I went to bed. I woke up this morning and the comments were back off again. So they're illegally hacking my station. Yeah, I already know that they watch. Now on the last video. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hachitan and his lies. See, his lies, his slanders. His slanders. We dealt with that in the boy that cried wolf. Yeah, it was two boys that was crying wolf yesterday on that video. They were on Fox News. And honey, mother busted them out on all of their lies. Yeah, labeling people, doing all, saying all kind of dangerous rhetoric. So did Fox News. Yeah. Anyway, I told y'all words are very, very magical if it were not so the tower of babel would never have happened yeah our words are our words are so potent they have suppressed my videos they have shadow banned my channel <laughs> and you know what because i know how powerful and potent our magic is and only certain people can even understand it and resonate with the message. You know, that really doesn't bother me. It, it doesn't bother me at all. Whatever they do, it don't bother me. Because I know while I am making these videos, as mother is speaking through me and the words are coming out of my mouth, they're going directly into the Most High's ears. Shalom, everyone. If you're new to my station, I am the Hebrew Widow. The Hebrew Rose of Jericho coming at you with some judgment news. Star Seed United, we're going to do things a little bit differently because they're playing games. We're turning my comments off, okay? So in the event that they turn off my comments, make sure that you say Abracadabra 777 especially in the courts of the Most High, because it's going into the ethers. Just like how when I'm creating these videos, my words are already reaching the throne of the Most High God of Israel. And so are yours. As you're watching, they're picking you up. Yeah, so make sure you say, Abracadabra 777, honey, it's magical. It's so powerful, this world is being turned upside down. It's so powerful that we got a rapid response from yesterday's video. Even with them taking down the comments. It only takes a few of us, y'all. Now let's look at this receipt of this rapid response from the Most High. That being uncomfortable is different than being unsafe. Months ago, I was sprayed with a noxious chemical on this campus. Multiple of my friends were hospitalized following the attack. I was bedridden for a couple of days and I felt extremely unsafe on my own campus. So this came up in yesterday's video. This post that was made three months ago is getting coughed back up. Now it came up in yesterday's video. 
that these IDF soldiers, the ones that's committing genocide, some of them have dual citizenship. And they serve in the IDF. They have, Some of them have no doubt participated in the genocide. That's why when this went before Congress and this was brought up again the other day, they tried to sweep it under the rug. Oh, no, he's, he's suspended. He no longer goes to school. But they didn't say that they were. Let me read the article again because mother wants it to be brought up again. At least two former IDF soldiers, now students at Columbia University, sprayed their classmates with a chemical irritant akin to that which Israel uses against the Palestine of oh, Palestinians. Several students were hospitalized, including Jewish Voice for Peace members, who the ex-IDF verbally harassed as well. And now we see what happens when you don't shut down anti-Semitic rhetoric and you allow these people to feel entitled. Now we see what happens when you don't shut down anti-Semitic rhetoric and allow these people to feel entitled. A couple of my friends were hospitalized following the attack. I was bedridden for a couple days and I... So I'm feeling really entitled right now. I'm feeling really entitled to this anti-Semitic rhetoric. Yeah, I'm feeling entitled because, see, this message has not been an easy message, okay? It has not been an easy message because I already know that the things that I'm saying, they would label it as anti-Semitic. I am in no way in fear of that word. It's an illegitimate word. They are not the Semitic people, nor the Shemitic people. Now the evidence is out there for the world to know. But they have had everybody so afraid of this word. And so afraid of the word hate. That is a trick of Hashtan. Everyone that is born on this planet as a human or a kind of man, every last person that came into this dimension has that emotion in them. And if they say they don't, they are lying. Okay. What what was so uh, was so tricky about hate? Because everybody has that emotion of hate. Yeah, you have it. You have it. Yeah, they just distorted the meaning of it. The, the meaning of hate. Let's look up the definition of hate. Now, I brought up this word hate in relation to that word anti-Semitism because they have tied those two words together. Like if you say anything about them, even if they are guilty of a genocide and you're calling them out on it, they connect it to anti-Semitism, which is connected to hate. OK, and they the, I'm telling you, it's a big trick. It's a big trick. The word hate has been distorted by Hashtan with his word magic. OK, and the Anti-Defamation League say they're the oldest, oldest anti-hate group. And they're the most hateful people on this earth. They do the, the worst to people. But anyway, the word hate, hate. Feeling intense or passionate dislike for someone or something. That's all hate is, is that you have an intense, passionate dislike. And everybody that was born on this planet had a di passionate dislike for something and for their own reasons. Yeah, so they have distorted this word hate and connected it to anti-Semitism. And with that, they make everybody feel guilty when they call them anti-Semitic. It's a big trick. It's word magic, okay? That word is illegitimate. It's illegitimate, and it has been proven. Now, for all you white people out there that serve white Jesus, and even red, yellow, black, and white, that believe that Jesus was white, even if you don't even believe in Jesus and who he is, but you believe Jesus is white? Jesus is not white. Jesus looks just like one of our brothers out here in the United States and in other parts of the world that look like us. 
Yeah, they tricked you with white Jesus so that you would believe that Jews are white. It was a big trick. And so they protected themselves with word magic, with that word anti-Semitism connected to the word hate and make everybody feel guilty or feel bad or put on defense if they call you anti-Semitic. It's a trick. I'm not afraid of the word. I know it doesn't belong to them. That word belongs to me. Yep, it belongs to me and everybody like me. So I'm not afraid of it. You might not resonate with this, this message. You know, because a lot of you have been tricked into believing that that word means something totally different from what it means. Yeah, and anti-Semitism was weaponized. We started our mission two years ago. I was guided by the Holy Spirit, our Holy Mother, uh, the Ruach HaKadosh, to take a word to that holy place that we call the courts of the Most High. And we did battle against that word and we destroyed it. And so every time that they use it, every time that they use that word, it backfires on them. So not only did they use the word magic, but they did weaponize it by getting uh, powerful governments to back them on that word, including the United States government. Building cross-community solidarity and collective action to fight hate. This strategy includes over 100 bold and unprecedented actions that government agencies are going to take to counter anti-Semitism. They used all kind of military terms concerning this word at the White House. Okay, so here he says they're going to do a counter action. It was a round table meeting about it. Combating anti-Semitism. All of these military words connected to anti-Semitism because they know that this is a great war. That includes calls for action for Congress, state and local governments, companies, technology platforms, civil society, and faith leaders, all of them to act, act, silence is complicity. And now we see what happens when you don't shut down anti-Semitic rhetoric and you allow these people to feel entitled, you know, and you allow these people to feel entitled, you know, act, silence is complicity, all of us. We'll stand united to affirm that an attack on any one group of us is an attack on all of us. He thinks somebody's a house Negro. We sick massa. <laughs> when have they ever united? When have they ever called for everybody in the United States? He named off everybody, not just the Congress and the Senate. He's talking about uh, the, the CEOs of corporations and, and the church, the churches. In the mosque, and everybody should side with the synagogue of Satan on this issue. You see that? They're trying to stay at the top of the pinnacle. So they want everybody to ally with them, to protect them all over words. Anti Semitism is all about words. That's what they have been hurt with words while they are committing a genocide they don't want anybody to say a word because once the words go out and people start conversating there comes unity of energy and that's what they're afraid of they're gonna come down off the top of that pinnacle so saith the most high god of israel in revelation 3 and 9 say it out loud star seed united abracadabra 777 this U.S. national strategy to counter anti-Semitism is a historic step forward. It sends a clear and forceful message. It sends a clear and forceful message. In America, evil will not win. Hate will not prevail. Evil certainly will not win. We're going to conquer evil today. So you see in Joe Biden's message, not only do they want to control a, an emotion that belongs to each individual, which is hate, but they also want to own your voices all to belong to the synagogue of Satan because everything is about them. Everything is about them. So they want total control over your emotions. They want total control over your words. I found myself ranting, you guys. So 
I don't want to make this video too long because I have a lot to say. We've been on this mission for two years. For two years and so i have a lot of history with what's going on here and uh back uh, in may of last year when president biden gave this speech he shook hands with the synagogue of satan yeah against us actually because it all began with hebrews to negroes yep that's when they start putting all these anti-semitic uh laws and the 13 families going to the White House before Congress over anti-Semitism, demanding more spying and collaboration with all of our federal agencies. Yeah, with anti-Semitism. The only people that can do this is Jewish, Zionists, and Israelis. They're the only people on this earth that can walk into the White House, demand a meeting for more spying on other nations. Yeah, that's what they did. I have receipts, baby. I have receipts. So this was a big move and it also set them up for this war. They had already planned this war. I told y'all they already planned this war and they were gonna use both to try to go from land to land and steal our rulership. That's how they rule wickedly. And their rulership is over. The Bilderbergs admitted it, but they're still trying to this these little shenanigans to stay in power. But they're not. They're gonna go right straight to the bottom. Broke as hell. Broke as hell. They're at the top now. They're gonna be at the bottom on skid row in a minute. Yes, because the most high said so. And as far as their power, their power at the top is going to go all the way to the bottom too. That's why they're going to all be the boy that cried wolf. Nobody's going to listen to these people. Anyway, there I go ranting again. Let's move on. I'm babysitting my little granddaughter today. So y'all excuse the background noise. I have her and Jackson in the background. <laughs> Venom and violence of anti-Semitism will not be the story of our time. What violence? What violence? These are the most protected people on the planet. What violence? But we see them committing violence, don't we? We see them committing violence. They are the most protected people on the planet. And they're trying to connect anti-Semitism with violence. And they cherish their victim card above all the cards in the deck. Their victim card is their trump card that they have been using. Sister Sophia, you came up with the perfect name for these people. The Professional Victims Unit. <laughs> That's not going to work for you anymore, Hashitan. We're committed. We're committed to restoring the soul of America. To just restoring it together. And we got to get to it now. What they wanted to restore is their rulership because the Balfour Declaration ran out and expired on their asses. And they needed a new magical word, just like the Balfour Declaration. That was word magic. A 67 word letter that stood all those decades while they were occupying over there in Israel. And they needed a new word to restore their rulership. That was anti-Semitism. And that's why our Holy Mother told us to take that word to the courts of the Most High. And they work to empower that word. So you see Joe Biden, the United States government, has their back. The European Union has their back. The UN has their back on that word, just like the Balfour Declaration was backed by powerful governments. And that's what they wanted to come at the world with. Once they got the backing of these governments with that word anti-Semitism, ahead of this war, 
a, a, a genocide that's happening in Gaza. They wanted to spread throughout the world doing what they're doing in Gaza. Here in the United States, they come into your area, beachfront area, by a lake, and they want to come and occupy. And they have the backing of the government. You either get down or lay down, just like in Gaza. Not just the United States. Yeah, but all colonized countries. Yeah, they wanted to recolonize. See, they were losing their grip. They know they're losing their rulership. It's been prophesied that Judah would rule. We're going to explain that too because it has everything to do with that war, why they call themselves Jewish over here. But yeah, that's they were weaponizing that word for real, for real, more than you know. So now that you understand the, this word magic of hate and anti-Semitism, it was also empowered by governments, not just the United States government. Okay. Kamala Harris's husband went on a tour. He went to the UN and he also went to um, uh, uh, the, European, the European Union with it. Just like the Balfour Declaration, I told y'all this is all about us. It's magic against magic. Yeah. And so now, I know it's hard to get this message is so hard because our people have been so abused under their rulership. And all of these nations came against us under the curses. But this war can only be won by energy, okay? And so that is why I have asked the Most High to bless the protesters regarding the genocide in Gaza, the pro-Palestinian protesters, because it's all about energy. It's all about magic, okay? So they tried to stop everything at a word, because once people start talking and their energy unite together, it's, it becomes unstoppable, okay? That's when the determination and the courage comes in, and that's what they're afraid of. So I am with and support the Palestinian, the pro-Palestinian protests because these people that are taking their energy out on the streets, of empathy is going to take Hashitan's kingdom out, okay? We had the solar eclipses with Nineveh in it, okay? The most, they were abusing us in Nineveh. That's what that was all about. They were abusing the Hebrew Israelites in Nineveh, weren't they? But the most high God of Israel, before he just judged them and slammed them. Did he not give them the opportunity to repent? He gave them a warning of a solar eclipse. And so in this solar eclipse, we've seen all of those Ninevehs lined up on X marks the spot. That's because the Most High is giving people the opportunity to repent. And so what we see in here now is people that want to be on the right side of history. They are showing their empathy towards the victims in Gaza at the hands of the evil synagogue of Satan. They are going against the synagogue of Satan too, like we are. And so that is why I'm not worried about what nation people co uh, come from at all. If they have empathy within them, if they had a little bit of empathy within them, the Most High blessed that empathy. He blessed their empathy. And that's why they're so determined and go, after, go out there day after day after day. These college students... 
these university students are their their energy is very very important because they are actually risking so that's a sacrifice they're risking they got into an ivy league school they took a chance on getting expelled they know how it works They took a chance on being blacklisted. So that's how deep their empathy goes. So I don't care what nation a person is in. I'm looking at the whole thing. And furthermore, furthermore, we are not going to be the only people left on the planet. No, the Hebrew Israelites are not going to be the only people left after all the judgments and the Most High takes the synagogue of Satan and all of their cronies out of this universe. We are not going to be the only people here. Otherwise, if we were the only people here, who would we be ruling? You see? And when we rule, the ruler's mother told me this about our rulership the only people that are going to get a crown and a throne are people with very very high levels of empathy and so that is why i'm dealing with things I'm, i'm 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 explaining this to you so you would understand because i know our people been abused we have a lot to be angry about but this goes we got to get over the anger and look at the whole picture so we can win this war Okay, Okay. so I'm going to go to another subject. You know how they were going after CRT, critical race theory, and, you know, Ron DeSantis was trying to erase and rewrite our history. That's how they stole our rulership before, and look who he's shaking his hands with. You see what I'm saying? It was all about our promised rulership. So they put Ron DeSantis online to try to do that, try to erase our history again. Now we know that they went around the entire earth on all the continents, busting noses off of sphinxes, destroying any artwork, any sign of our elite status that we had before they came from wherever they came from. And so, again, they try to erase our history because that's how that's what worked for them before instilling our rulership. So I just wanted to bring that point out. Now, let's go on back to anti-Semitism. And now we see what happens when you don't shut down anti-Semitic rhetoric and you allow these people to feel entitled. And above all things, they never want you to feel entitled. They want to be the only ones entitled, okay? They're entitled so much that they can go over to Israel, commit a genocide, kill up a whole bunch of children, elderly people, pregnant women, and end up in an Ivy League school. So not only do they want your voice, to own your voice, they want to own your emotion, And they never want you to feel entitled. Anyway, we're going to move on, move back to uh, the legitimacy of the word anti-Semitism. Because I said it's an illegitimate word. I'm not afraid of it. It's a lie. It does not belong to the synagogue of Satan. Now, when you break it down, that's what we have. We're going to have to go back to the courts of the Most High on this word in relations to the Hebrew Israelites, the people of the book, okay? Because on yesterday's video, you know, I I went over anti. Thank you, Sister Tammy, for breaking this down. Yeah, this word magic. And so she she broke down and decoded anti-Semitism and gave us the magical meaning of it. So anti has the uh, numerical value of 17, which means victory. One plus seven means new beginning, okay? Meaning that they wanted to have a continuous new beginning, a never-ending victory over whatever they assigned that word to. So in our case, 
it's anti-semitic we are the semitic people yes. they wanted to bind us up and have victory over us continuously and that's what we're gonna take to the courts of the most high we're gonna untangle this word magic star cg united say abracadabra 777 we have cursed this word yeah we pretty much destroyed this word as far as them using it against us but it goes deeper than that this is magic on a very high level we're gonna break this witchcraft this sorcery so let's talk about semitism or semitic okay and and us being Semitic has to do with our language. Aramaic was the beginning of our language. And then the Arab nation and the Hebrew Israelites that spoke Arama Aramaic, they came up with their own dialects. And there you have the Arab language or Arabic, and then you have the Hebrew. That They are not Semitic because they stole now they did steal our alphabet and they used some of our dialect mixed with their dramatic language and that's called yiddish yiddish is not semitic so that word doesn't belong to them in that way okay and that semitic is like a word that came from shemitic and that's the bloodline of shem which they also are not of the bloodline of Shem. Okay? And so that word, anti-Semitism, they wanted victory over us, though. And they wanted that victory to be have new beginnings over and over and over again. So that's why we're going to take it to the courts of the Most High. We're taking that word back because we're going to untie this tangle, that this, this tangled up word magic that kept us bound. They do not have victory over us. Yeah, we're going to take our victory today in the courts of the Most High. Okay? And we're going to unwrap the protection that they have created with that word tied with hate. So now let's go to the dictionary on anti-Semitism. Hostility or prejudice against Jewish people. But it doesn't say anti-Jewish. It says anti-Semitism. So we can see here again another receipt that that word, those were anti-Semitism is illegitimate. Okay. Um, the Most High, he had set up certain boundaries on what they called themselves. Okay. So let's deal with Jewish. Jewish means a kind of a Jew. Not really a Jew, but a kind of a Jew. Okay? Israeli. They could not call themselves the tri the 12 tribes of Israel. They could not call themselves the Hebrew Israelites. They had to call themselves Israeli because the Most High had certain boundaries that they couldn't cross. Okay? So... Whatever nickname that they gave themselves was purposeful. So now over here in the United States of America, they knew that, first of all, Judah was already here before Christopher Columbus, along with some other tribes. We were indigenous to the land. That's number one. Number two, we came over here in the Atlantic slave trade. Most of us over here are from the tribe of Judah. And we were promised to rule with the Messiah in the new status quo. In this great reset. And so they call themselves Jewish over here in the United States. Because they wanted that rulership. Now, this is how deep their support goes. Because I've been hearing these words coming from different politicians like Joe Biden 
and Chuck Schumer. My commitment to Israel, I want to make clear again, is ironclad. Is ironclad. Is ironclad. The security of Israel is critical. And with those words, you have bound yourself to the synagogue of Satan for judgment. You see, it's only, what did they say? It's less than 1% of these people. It's less than 1% of them that rule over the whole entire world except for the uncolonized countries, okay? And so now Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, and everybody that used that word, you guys notice how they use word magic? They use the same language. Like when they all get in front on, on the, every time they're questioned on the genocide, what do they say? Israel has a right to defend themselves. Israel has a right to defend themselves. Israel has a right to defend themselves. Now they're telling people, I don't care if you protest. I don't care what you feel about it. We at the White House have ironclad support for Israel. So they just bound themselves for judgment to them. Yeah. Everybody that aligns themselves with the synagogue of Satan will be wiped out. Okay, they're not going to even be welcomed in this universe. Once they are gone, the universe will be made whole again. It will always make sure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself again. We have an ironclad support for all Semitic people, the Hebrew Israelites, allies, and friends. We have allies, too, not of this world. Some of this world, but our power comes from our allies from the 5D. The Almighty God, the creator of all things, and the master of the day of judgment, our Father. The Ruach Kakadash, the Holy Spirit, our Mother. The King and God of this earth, the Messiah, the Heavenly Host. And so what? where you might think that this message is very dangerous. Oh, they're going to come after you. I'm not afraid of these people. They have lost their power. It's magic against magic. And we're getting ready to take our magic to the courts of the Most High, y'all. This, I hope you guys understand just how dangerous that word was. How they were trying to use this word to steal our rulership. They needed that damn word anti-Semitism to win our rulership. They needed that word empowered by governments. They needed to own every individual's emotion of hate. And they also needed to be in control and own everyone's voices because the only way that they could possibly win this war is with little or no opposition. On April 15th, on the April 15th tax day protest, we asked the Most High, to bless the protesters, to rejuvenate them, to even bless their empathy even more, give them courage, determination, and fortitude. And look what's happening, Harvard University. This is them setting up their camps. Isn't this beautiful? All praises to the Most High. Look at all of this empathetic energy. The people united shall never be defeated. The people united shall never be defeated. Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Abracadabra. Father, Father. Once again, we thank you for granting us 
the privilege to come to your most holy courts and bring our cases against the enemies of humanity, the synagogue of Satan, serpent seed, Hashatan's children. Father, we know you already heard this case. You've seen all of our evidence, and we're asking for judgment against Hashatan and his family. Yes, Father. We're coming with that word anti-Semitism again. This time in another way, Father. We know that you already destroyed their usage of the word. It backfires every time they try to use it, just like now. Yeah, but today, Father, we want to take dominion over that word. It belongs to us. We are the victors. We have new beginnings. We are the Semitic people. And we take that word back from Hashatan and his children that it do not belong to. They use that word, Father, to keep us bound under their rulership. And we take that word back, Father. Abracadabra. I'm so thankful to be a part of this mission, Father. I thank you for that. Hashitan was counting on combating the whole world, especially us Hebrew Israelites, without any opposition. Father, we thank you for raising up an opposition. And Mother, we thank you for the wisdom and your guidance through this mission to clobber Hashatan and his children and his family. Yes, Mother, we thank you for that. From the very beginning, you told us it was magic against magic. And you told us what Hashatan's magic was about. Words and illusion. Well, Mother, we thank you for all of that wisdom. We feel the victories. We thank you, Father, for all of the receipts that you gave us. And, and, and now I'm so excited because you're giving us rapid responses to our prayers. We see that you bless the empathy again of the planet, that you bless those protesters with courage, fortitude, and determination. Standing against the status quo. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you for exposing the synagogue of Satan even deeper. Oh, we am so excited, Father. Father, we also uh, take dominion over the energy of hatred. We take dominion over the energy of hatred and we call it to belong to each individual as it is supposed to. Abracadabra. Hashitan has been harnessing hatred. He has been directing hatred and he has spewed hatred. He has been the master over hatred but no more Hashitan, because we now have dominion over that energy. Abracadabra. Father, we ask you to bless all of the opposition against Hashitan and his children worldwide. Abracadabra. Father, we thank you for these rapid responses that you're giving us. We see what you're doing, Father, and we appreciate it. You have made us more than conquerors, giving us the entitlement to come to this most holy place and speak directly to you. I feel so privileged and honored that you would even accept our energy. Thank you, Father. Star Seed United, you know what to do. Give your Father praise and glory. Give your mother adoration and pledge your allegiance to our Messiah, the King, and the God of this earth.
that is the download that I have for you today. I hope that you gleaned some power from this message and some wisdom and enlightenment. Yes, if you're new to my station, I know this is very strange. It's a very hard message to give. Only a few people resonate with it. Yeah, but if you do, feel free to subscribe and join in this fight. It's a magical fight. Yeah, it's Starseed United. Thank you so very much for your support of this station. Don't forget to hit the like. That's you validating that you're in the fight with me. Yes, and I have a request from you all. One of my granddaughters, she need a lot of love and light. And I ask you to send it her way. Abracadabra. Okay, you guys. May goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life so that we may dwell in that royal palace with our father Yahweh, our mother the Ruach HaKadosh, Marihala, and our big brother Messiah, the king and god of this earth forevermore. Abracadabra. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share all of this good news. Doesn't it feel good to fight back? Star Seed United forever. Star Seed for life. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your kind support of this station. Yes, all your gifts of love. May the Most High bless you 100-fold for whatever your heart desires. Abracadabra. Okay, until the next Judgment News, your big sister, the Hebrew widow, the Hebrew rose, Jericho out. Shalom.